you're North American, right? And yeah. you've come to Tuscany and you're absolutely for the best of the old Tuscan traditions. Do people recognize that or do they still just yeah. treat you as a foreigner? Well, it's funny because when I came here, I, I did have this moment where I was a little bit disillusioned and disappointed that a lot of Chianti Classicos didn't taste like Sangiovese, didn't feel like they, they expressed where they were coming from. And that's why I named the first wine that I created Retro Marcia, because I wanted to say that I was going backwards. So what does that mean in Italian? Retro Marcia literally means to reverse, to go backwards. And that was the first wine that I created and named. And a lot of Italians would be like, Michael, why do you want to go backwards? We want to do Passa Avanti, which means a step forward. And it's, so it's ironic when a foreigner comes to an area uh, and, you know, where we see such rich culture and practice and history, we come from a place with very little culture, history and practice, especially in agriculture, and we want to come and learn it and adapt it and learn from it. And, and a lot of the locals are trying to move as far away from it because they associate poverty with it and hard times. But if you, originally I had a very negative idea of what the Mezzadria was, but if you really talk to people who actually experience it, they often look very fondly at that um, time period as a very convivial social period where it's like, I think of it like the Am Amish Americans where they get together and help raise barns and things. It was very much that kind of mentality and that kind of um, u united, uh, we're all in this together kind of theory, period. And to me that, um, has become more, much more individual and unfortunately uh, has resulted in a further separation of uh, uniqueness or, and territorial kind of practices. Is there, a, is there a real, I mean obviously in, in wine regions all around the world, not just here, you'll have some very, very big companies, merchants for example, then some small fry like you, and there's often that tension uh, between the two over, over, over how to do stuff and how to label stuff. Uh, what, what sort of tensions are there here in terms of, say, this idea of zoning, if you could explain yeah, that? Sure. Well, recently um, an initiative of Chianti Classico was to, um, uh, to introduce a new tier in Chianti Classico, a, a sort of grand reserve. Uh, it's called Gran Selezione. And I think this was really a tool that made sense for larger wineries who have larger productions and, and many different labels, and some of it might not be farmed by the state itself. But as a small estate who farms everything by themselves, uh, it's integral mente prodotto, completely farmed, made, want, produced, and bottled by us, um, we, we don't uh, feel like that distinction, uh, which is the new distinction of the Gran Selezione, makes sense for us. So what we would prefer is something like uh, the subzone uh, movement, which is something that I've been involved with and a lot of like mind producers are, are interested in. And that is trying to bring out, uh, trying to teach people and make them understand uh, how large and diverse Chianti Classico is.